Welcome to today's podcast. I'm so excited about having this character right next to me, Reverend Dennis Maddox. He's a pastor here on staff. But besides that, he's like a son to me, and I've watched him serve God for how many years, Dennis? 41. 41 years. I could say a lot of things about him, but I I know you're going to, after he gets through with this, you're going to know a little bit about him. But I say it all the time, and I just have to say it. I've never met a man with such integrity as, as Dennis Mattis. He's got such a high integrity. And I say that about every member of his family. The Bible said a faithful man, a faithful man is hard to find. But Dennis Maddox is a man of integrity. He's a faithful man. And he's a man that knows how to lead people into praise and worship. In fact, the first time him and his wife and his sister-in-law walked into the church, I was on the platform. I didn't know who he was, but I did know one of the, his wife. I knew her. And when he walked in, God said, that's your praise and worship leader. And I gave it out, and everybody laughed. Well, I thought they were laughing at me, but they were laughing because they knew his talent and his ability, and he had just gotten saved. And I said, you can laugh if you want to, but I know what I heard. And since that time, he's been the praise and worship leader. So, Dennis, we weren't talking about the prayer of faith, mm -hmm. learning how to believe God for whatever you need in your life. Mm -hmm. So I've invited you here today because everybody walks a little different walk. Right. They're just different challenges that everybody meets. Mm -hmm. And we're wanting the people to know that is listening today, whatever challenge you're facing, it's not the end of the world, that God is a miracle working God. So because they hear me say that all the time, I want you to take it from here and share with them. Well, I mean, uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. We hear it all the time. And, you know, one of the things that what I do and is part of the ministry God's given me is through praise and worship. And I think uh, that part of the ministry is vital no matter if you're called to that part of ministry or not because it's, it's just obvious that it helps you get in the presence of God. And one of the things about getting in the presence of God, when you read the Word of God, or you hear the Word of God, or even when you, after you've been in His presence through praise and worship, you're able to hear the Spirit of God talking to you, uh, that Word comes alive. Mm -hmm. You know, it becomes uh, from a Logos to a Rhema Word for us. And to me, it's, it's about... Uh, word becoming a revelation to you and until you get that revelation that God wants you saved you hear the word of God over and over again you become saved you have faith for that sadly in most of our churches and in our denominations that's all they preach is getting the fire insurance not necessarily living the life or if they do live the life it's an undefeated life uh, or defeated life and uh, the thing about listening to the Word of God, reading the Word of God, praying, and then after you've been in the presence of God through praise and worship, is it ignites that. You're, you're up at a level that you weren't at before, because before you were just at a, a soulish level, of a level of your mind, and you're around the world and they, they bring you down. And we have to be in that place uh, where the fountain is, you know, to get renewed, whether you were we were just talking about something that I need in my life. Well, uh, it, it's not God's fault, you mm -hmm. know. It's it's if I'm not having received that, it's my fault. But on the other hand, if you don't know, then you can't move in faith if you haven't heard that. I know it sounds simple, and this, but, I, I, but the gospel is simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and you know, John four, the the woman at the well, Jesus said. Uh, Today is a day when the true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. And we have that opportunity to worship in spirit and truth. And then another scripture that's, you know, been quoted many, many times in Ephesians chapter 5, where it's talking about godly living, but at the same time, it, it, it tells you how to live godly. And the only way that you can really live godly is living by faith. And, and I want to read this, if you don't mind. No. Uh, this is out of the, the Passion, but it says the same thing in other, other translations. Ephesians 5, 18 through 19. And don't get drunk with wine, which is rebellion. Instead, be filled continually with the Holy <coughs> Spirit. Well, how do we stay filled continually? If, if it's a continual thing, that means that we leak. 
Is it, you know, yeah, we do. Okay. It says, and your hearts will overflow with a joyful song to the Lord. Keep speaking to each other with words of scripture, singing the Psalms with praises and spontaneous songs given by the Spirit. And so you see that progression of, of singing the word, singing Psalms, praise songs, and then spontaneous songs when we get to that place of worship, where this, when we're worshiping God, then God can move and, and sing in the spirit or, or talk to us in the spirit either way. Um, we see that in corporate worship all the time. You know, we, we start off with, oh, yeah. a, with a fast song, a praise song, thanking God for who he is and what he's done. And then we get to the part where we worship him yeah, we're and we're ready. loving him, you know, and, and that loving God moves the spirit of God to speak whether it's through a word of prophecy or a word of knowledge or uh, whatever the case may be, or tongues and interpretation, or if it's just singing in the Spirit, God singing to us or us singing to God. Uh, it's an intimate time, but at the same time, it moves us to be more sensitive. And then when the Word's preached, our faith is ignited on what you preach or what Pastor Lisa yeah. preaches or whoever whoever's in the pulpit. We're moved you know, to that, we're at another level where we hear that word at this level instead of being down here, yeah. hearing the word here and not necessarily receiving all that God has. I'm sure it's seeds that are still planted in us, but if it's up here, the goal of where we're trying to get is quicker because the, the seed is planted in the soil that is prepared to receive it. How is it? I mean, I think about sometimes when I see you up there and I think, wow. His job, his ministry, is to get the people whose mind is on everything else in the world, and, and yet he, the praise and worship, that when you begin to lead us all in praise and worship, the world becomes dimmer. Exactly. Your problem becomes so much dimmer, mm -hmm. and an awareness that we're worshiping God. I, it always amazes me because, you know, sometimes I'll think when we're doing praise and worship, I try not to think of any other song except what you're leading us in. But every now and then I'll get the theme and I thought, oh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you hit it. Mm -hmm. You just, I just, I can rest in the fact that you're going to have the right song. Now, it doesn't come without you praying. Right. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. That you're very talented, but you don't rest on your talent. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's got to be, I think it's an awesome responsibility to have not just a sermon, mm -hmm. but a message from God to his people. To me, I always think, wow, he's chosen me to be his spokesman. Right. And I want to get it right. Mm -hmm. And then I think about what you do. You were handpicked by God to lead people into worship, which makes them more receptive to his message. Right. That just don't happen overnight. That right. just don't happen by picking out the songs that you want, because yeah. you and I differ on songs sometimes. I tell him he likes an eight, and I like a foot stomp and ten. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, but, and, and he just adjusts himself, especially when, it's, when he knows, okay, who's preaching today? <laughs> and he knows, hit a ten, you know, I'm dancing on the grave, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, but you don't pick out, you don't pick out what you like. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -mm. I used to. Because you wouldn't do a anymore. tent. Yeah, I know, but I kept riding you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I kept riding you because I like that foot stomping. And either you've changed and sort of like it or you've mm -hmm. given up. I don't know which it is. Uh, kind of both. I think. Kind of both. Yeah. But you always hit the right theme. Yeah, well. And, and so, you know, the people need to know that it's not just jumping in there. You have a ministry to do. Well, I, it's it's a it's a process too of every day spending time with God, and I think that that's uh, yes. I see people that just get born again and receive things quickly, and, and that's that. But it's it's a day by day relationship. You know, we're we're not in a sprint. We're in a marathon, and, and no. enjoy the journey. You know, I think you were talking to me a while ago because you were concerned concerned for me in a certain area of, of seeing me maybe not being as, as happy as I could be in certain areas. Well, it's a journey and we have to learn to enjoy that process and look over, over to, sometimes we have to look beyond the barrier that's there 
until our faith gets there. And then once we're, we, while we're doing that, we still have to enjoy the process. You were talking about laughing about something a while ago. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes we just have to laugh at the devil. We you do. Know? I, this is another scripture here. You know, our, our kids Sunday were, were doing praise and worship, yes. right? And, and I just wanted to bring this out. This is Psalms 8, and this to me is so good. It says, you have built a stronghold by the songs of children. Strength rises wow. up with the chorus of infants. This kind of praise has power to shut Satan's mouth. Childlike worship will silence the madness of those who oppose you. And, and, and Where is that in the word? It's, it's, it's Psalms 8 2. This is the oh, Passion yeah, Translation. Psalms 8 2. Uh, but I'll read it in the NLT. You yeah, probably no. recognize this better. It says, You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. And I think of a, you know, you think about people that are, when I saw those kids, I'm saying they're setting themselves up for a life of expectancy with God. They're yeah. setting themselves up for a life of faith with God. And there's so, you know, if you look around at other churches, and I'm not knocking yeah. them for, for that, I just want them to, to fulfill what God has for them. But whenever you see kids there, you, you say, man, this, this is something that they're getting armed if they'll walk in it, and it just yeah. don't have to do it themselves. But they're in a, an environment where they're set up to succeed in the things of God and with God and for God and fulfilling their destiny, you know. And, and to me, even just just that part of it, Sunday, uh, to me was like so satisfying in knowing uh, that we're doing what God wants us to do collectively as a church. And that's that's powerful. I mean, that's... It is. See, it, that kid that age... Right. Knowing the truth mm -hmm. of how awesome their God was and that he'll do miracles. And they are already, even the youngest, experiencing miracles yes. as a result of God. And I'm like you, I look back there and I thought, wow. They got the message, but not only did they get the message, but they got the worship. Mm -hmm. I mean, they put almost all worshipers... <clears throat> You know, to shame maybe <laughs> their exuberance, but careful, we said, let them, Yeah, you know, because I can hang with them. <clears throat> I can't dance as long as they do. So every now and then I choose some people <laughs> to get on there and finish this for your pastor. But it's because you teach them how to worship. Yeah, and it's that, that way, if we will understand that people are, they know you by your fruit, and your fruit has an impact on the people that you're around, you know? Yeah. It really it does. does. It, it does. It's this, if you were talking about loyalty and, and everything else, well, I mean, I learned a lot of that from you by hanging around you, you know? Um, and you should, back when we were at the other building, I mean, you showed up for work every day. Yeah. You know, you prayed every day. It wasn't uh, uh, just on Sunday thing. It wasn't a just don't uh, do as I say, but not as I do. Yeah. It was... Here's an example, you know, maybe it's a different way because yeah. you're, you're called to, to do from a pastor's standpoint or a lead pastor's standpoint, but here's the example, here's the fruit, you see what my life, my track record here. Yeah. And so that is a testimony that allows other people to see that this walk of faith not only is possible, but it can be victorious. It can be victorious. Yeah, at the same time. And so... Uh, my children would raise and they will tell you, they would leave for school and they knew their mother was going into prayer. Mm -hmm. They always knew that. And Lisa talks about one time she was having a hard day at school, but she knew her mother was praying. Mm -hmm. And when they came home from school, I was either praying or studying. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'd quit and spend time with my children, but that because my call was for that. When you're called into the ministry, that's your calling. Mm -hmm. is to seek God, pray, and to study the Word. But what I love about Sunday, when I look at them, I think, what an early age to learn to worship God. Because if all you do is learn the Word, it'll be so legalistic to you. Yeah. But the praise and worship, to me, it's like a stamp on the, on the character and the nature of God. Dennis, you know, the one thing that um, sort of concerns me is I see other... I've seen other churches, every, all the emphasis on worship. Mm -hmm. 
and it's like they do it and and they're so satisfied that they give you 15 minutes of the word and I'm thinking you got to be kidding yeah I mean you're worshiping but you can still be defeated because right. you don't have the word right. and so they need them both and I think you I love it when you're worshiping God and then God begins to speak to the congregation from you and I always think, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm out there pulling and sometimes I'll say, when I know just before you, let's come on, David, God wants us. I mean, Dennis, God wants to say something to us. Mm -hmm. Man, you do it every time, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So <clears throat> I appreciate the fact that when we talk about the prayer of faith, I know things that you've had challenges in your life. Yeah. You know, you're, you're a challenge with your family, your mother. Do you see what's well, the different challenges? We all have them. You don't need yep. to know what they are. Right. But nobody ever is immune from attacks of the enemy. Exactly. But I've right. seen you take it. I've seen you walk it out, mm -hmm. and I've seen victory in your life. Yes. yes. And and so people need to know that the woman with the issue of blood is the principles of God. All the principles are right there in that woman. You know, is what we said. She said it, she did it, she received it, and she told it. Yeah. So people need to know that this works for everybody. And there is, I always say this because I do believe it, there is a special blessing for the praise and worship, those in the ministry. I truly, truly, truly believe that. I say, you've already got, you've already got half the battle won because you can't have an anointing for praise and worship unless you live it. So Amen. would you pray for the people, please? I sure will. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to to speak with Pastor Datha and to share from my heart, God, um, how, Lord God, we can get in your presence through praise and worship and then receive by faith what you have for us, Lord. I just thank you that that, Lord, that you're touching whoever's watching this right now. God, that it'll become a revelation to them, that their life will be better, that relationship with you will be closer, God, and they'll rise up in faith and receive whatever it is they need through your word and from you, God. We love you, God. We honor you. We thank you so much for this time. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you.